of Keeping Balance Fun Fit Videos from Home, brought to you by Centre de Santé Communitaire Hamilton Niagara. My name is Leah. Well, how is everyone doing out there this week? I sure hope everyone is doing well. Oreo says hi too. <laughs> Uh, and I hope we have had some nice weather days lately, um, some nice, some not so nice, but I do feel like it's getting warmer out now, so I hope you're able to get out and enjoy the sunshine and the warm air while it was here. Before we begin today, I need to remind you once again that if you do ever feel dizzy, have chest pain, feel short of breath, start sweating profusely, um, to stop the exercises. If necessary, get help. Respect your limits, take breaks as needed, and work at your own pace. As the weeks progress, you will continue to get stronger and it will get easier. Use your mobility devices as you need to. Uh, if you feel some muscle soreness, generally if you've been doing the classes uh, regularly, that probably isn't gonna happen for you anymore, um, unless we start a different exercise, but generally, you should be feeling fine. If you're just kind of getting into things, you might feel a little bit of soreness and that's okay to feel workout pain. Um, joint pain, that's not okay. Um, kind of check what you're doing, maybe dial back how deep you're taking um, a certain exercise, um, change your body positioning a little bit. Um, it's hard to give any exact um, recommendations when we're doing things on video, but uh, and if something is bothering you, maybe just don't do that exercise as well. That's, that's a-okay. Um, remember to not challenge yourself to your maximum while we're doing these home exercise videos. I don't want anyone to get hurt or fall. So long as you're moving, you're getting a benefit. Remember, motion is the potion. All right, let's uh, ensure we have everything we need before we begin. So we need a spot to exercise in, so about a five by five foot uh, area is perfect. We need a uh, firm chair with a uh, sturdy backrest, okay? We need clothes that we can move in. We need running shoes or a sturdy shoe that uh, can fit snugly on your foot. Um, we need water if you feel you need that. Uh, the ball. So again, if you don't have a ball or haven't found a ball or asked your grandchildren for a ball yet, um, you can use a soup can, um, a full bottle of water and just kind of use that as best you can to roll or to squeeze, whichever it is we're doing that week. Um, the bean bag, if you can get a bean bag, find a bean bag, make a bean bag as we've talked about in the last couple weeks, okay? I um, just have half a, bag, half a cup of rice in a baggie, zipped up, air taken out, um, that the gra uh, grass, the rice can move freely in there, and then you're going to put it inside a sock, um, a bandana, some kind of little sack, you might even have a little small um, little bag that you can put it in, and, and just so long as those beans, or those uh, rice pieces can kind of settle and move. If it's just like a lump on your head, it's not going to do the same uh, as what it would if it could move around a little bit. And um, this week we're going to be using TheraBand. So your TheraBand, you might have a piece, I know some of you have got them from the dollar store or had them from various physiotherapy experiences you've had. So if you have TheraBand, dig that out. Um, we're going to use it this week with a knot tied on the end to make a small loop. Not too small, but not too big, just kind of uh, average size loop, but we'll discuss that as we get to that exercise. And I want you to also, um, for next week, I'd like to do some marble work. Now we haven't gotten to that in our classes yet this session um, through uh, Centre de Santé, but uh, we always have um, a, a baggie of just regular size kids marbles that you used to play marbles with on the plate on the schoolyard. Uh, the small size, just the regular size little ones. Um, I have five in here, um, but you can use anything. You might have certain games that you have at home. Hungry Hungry Hippos has marbles in it. 
Um, there's various um, games that have small pieces in it that aren't sharp or anything. You could use those. You could use dice. You could use macaroni. You could use small pebbles that you might have outside decorating your yard. Um, glass beads, those decorative kind of florist beads, you could use those. Um, macaroni, did I say that yet? Um, a thimble, you could use a thimble if you have a couple of sewing items that might work. Um, and I guess if worse comes to worse, you can just use balls of um, tin foil or balls of paper, that kind of thing. About the size of these marbles here. I don't know if I come up closer if you can see how big they are. Okay. Um, but we're not going to use them this week, but for next week. So I thought I would give you the task of starting to search and the, put your thinking cap on. Think about where you can find something that size and we'll do a little bit of the marble work with our feet. Okay, but we'll, I'll tell you about that next time. Alrighty, so maybe um, take time to pause now, gather what you need, and then uh, you can pause the video and then find what you need and then come on back and we'll get started. Okay, so you can pause. I'm not going to pause. Um, I'm going to move on into our warm up. Okay, so I'm just going to move my chair to the side. Remember, our warm up is done in stocking feet. So we have uh, just socks on right now. You might have bare feet at home, that's okay too. All right, so let's begin with the standing march. We are going to just be staying in one spot, bringing our knees up, swinging our arms, just to get our muscles warmed up, our heart rate up a little bit, just to get things flowing, joints lubed up, okay, before we begin. So you can walk at your own pace. You do not have to go the same speed as me. We're just gonna walk for a, a few seconds just to get things going. Excellent. Good job, keep it going. I gotta get warmed up here. Although it is warmer in my porch today, it's not too bad. I had the heater on for a little bit too before we started just to get the air a little warmer. But today isn't a bad day. Alrighty, terrific, good job. Okay, let's stand in our good standing posture now. So if you recall, your feet are about hip width apart, feet are flat on the floor, knees are relaxed or unlocked, hips are level, shoulders are level, belly's pulled in, chin is back, string is pulling us up nice and tall, shoulders are back and down. Let's take a deep breath in through our nose, breathe in like you're breathing in flowers, and out like you're blowing out birthday candles. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Excellent. Terrific work. Okay, we're going to move on to warming up our neck now. And we're going to do a different neck exercise again today. This one's a bit of a combination of a few that we've done. So we're kind of doing one exercise and doing all the different stretching. So we're going to start by looking over one of your shoulders, okay? And then we're going to bring our heads up and down in a small zigzag, not a big zigzag, as you go back and forth from left to right. So now you can see I'm looking over my other shoulder. Now I'm going to zigzag back to look over my left shoulder. Your eyes are open at this time and you're letting your eyes follow the movement of your head. Awesome work. Keep going. Another one back and forth. Again, you're going at your own pace, doing what you can do. If you don't feel comfortable doing something, you don't have to do it. Now I challenge you to try and close your eyes while you're doing this movement. Of course, have your chair close by if you feel you might need it for balance. Eyes are closed. You're doing that same zigzag motion going left to right and right to left. Oh, 
Alrighty, good job. Give those shoulders a bit of a roll. Terrific. Okay, we're going to do that um, one that we did last week called turning the upper body. So our feet are staying in the same position. Our feet are planted about hip width apart on the floor. Feet are staying flat on the floor. We're gonna put our arms, hands on top of our shoulders. Um, if this bothers your shoulders, you may put your hands on your hips or you can cross your hands over your chest, okay? But I'm gonna do it like this. And what we're going to do is we're, we're going to turn our torso. So this is warming up our, our torso area, hips, even into our knees. You can see my feet are staying flat, but my knees are moving, my body's turning. So shoulders are starting square like so. We're turning so that our shoulders are now perpendicular to our body, okay? My face is still looking towards the camera though. Now I'm gonna look over my shoulder towards to behind me. Then I'm gonna look back to the front. Then I'm gonna turn my shoulders back to center. Now I'm turning the other direction perpendicular. Now I'm looking back over my shoulder. I'm looking back to the front and my shoulders are square again. So turn your shoulders, then look back over your shoulder, look back to the front, shoulders to the front. Turning your shoulders, still looking forward, now looking back, now looking forward, shoulders to the front. So it's shoulders, look back, look forward, shoulders. Shoulders, look back, look forward, shoulders. That's it, shoulders, look back, look forward, shoulders. 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 Shoulders, look back, look forward, shoulders and shoulders. Look back, look forward, shoulders. Excellent job. Give your shoulders a roll. That's tough on those shoulders. Bring your arm across your chest, pull your elbow. It's gonna stretch out the shoulder area. This one is a tough one. It, it can be confusing to try to learn. So give yourself a break if you found it a little tough. Change arms here. As long as you're moving and you're trying, you're doing a great job. This one is, that one is particularly good for working those muscles and getting that range of motion down for checking your blind spot when you're backing up in your car. So this one is basically the same movement that you do when you're, when you're turning around trying to see when you're backing up. So that's why we do that one. That's an important one. Okay, we are going to now uh, get our chair back in place and we're going to get our ball and we're going to do our press and weight shifts. All right, so, and actually we're gonna use our bean bag too today for this one. So let's get our bean bags out. Bean bags can go on your head. Ball is gonna go down on the floor under your right foot. We're standing to the right of our chair, all right? Okay, so remember your feet are about hip width apart in this one as well, okay? So we have that space to shift. We're gonna start with the ball under the front of our right foot. So under the ball of your foot, okay? So your heel is down on the floor. This is like a gas pedal, if you remember, and your toes and the ball of your foot is up on top of the ball, okay? And we're gonna press down, so you're gonna be pressing on that gas pedal. Heel is staying in contact with the floor all the time, okay? All right, so we're going to press down on the ball under the ball of our foot and then shift our weight back to the other leg. Press, shift. If you need to hold the chair, you can. Press, shift. Four, five. If you want to try closing your eyes, you can. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Very nice. Good work. All right, rolling that ball to the back of our foot now. So the ball is now gonna be under your heel. Toes are down on the mat, in contact with the mat the whole time. So when you look at my foot, I'll do a side view for you. The ball is under, really under my heel, right at the back of my foot. I don't want it under my heel like that, or under my arch, like so. That will hurt your arch. This ball is not meant to be under your arch. It's meant to be under the bony parts, okay? So where all your, your 
Um, bones are up at the front of your foot, under the ball of your foot, and again, under your bony part of your heel, which is the very back. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my foot forward again. Ball is under my heel, toes are down, feet are hip width apart. I'm gonna press down on that ball, and I'm gonna shift my weight. Press, shift, press, shift, four, five, very good. You can try closing your eyes. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Very nice job. All right, let's roll that ball over to the other side of the chair. We're going to work our left foot now. Okay, so let's begin with that ball under the front of our foot, so under the ball of your foot. Feet are hip width apart, okay? Heel is down. Uh, ball's under the ball of your foot, the back front pad of your foot, right behind your toes, and your heel is down on the mat. All right, let's give that ball a press and a shift. Press, shift, that's it. Three, four, five, you can try shutting your eyes, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Nice job. All right, and rolling that ball to the back of our foot now, under your heel. Toes are down on the mat. Remember the ball is right to the back of your heel. Right to the back. Okay, feet are both pointed straight ahead, parallel. Feet are hip width apart. Toes are down. Let's press that ball and shift our weight. Press, shift, press, shift. There's four, five. You can try shutting your eyes. Six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Very nice work. All right, we can pick that ball up. We will put the ball away. We will keep our bean bag out though. And let's get our shoes on now, please. All right, so we're done our warm up. We're moving on to our balance next. All right, okay. Um, again, if you need more time to get your shoes tied, press the pause button, okay? All right, I'm gonna move my chair to the side again and we're gonna move on to our Tai Chi move, which we've done every week. So this should be getting a little bit easier to do, feeling a little smoother, a little more flowing. I'm gonna put the bean bag on my head, okay? And I'm gonna start with my right foot ahead and my left foot behind. My front foot is pointed straight ahead, my back foot's on a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna face the side so you can see my side view while I'm doing it, okay? So again, right foot's pointed straight ahead, back foot's on a 45. The farther apart you have your feet, the more of a challenge it is for your balance, okay? Let's begin with that weight shift. When my weight's on the back foot, that knee's bent. When my weight's on the front foot, that knee bends, okay? So we're doing that shift back and forth. We're considering our hips too now. So when our weight's over the straight ahead foot, our hips are straight ahead. When our weight's over the 45 foot, our hips are 45. The foot gives the clue as to the direction of the hips. Arms now, when the weight's in the back, the arms are in the back. When the weight's in the front, the arms are in the front. And we're trying to make our arms a smooth flowing kind of oval beside us, okay? Bodies are upright, chins are level, so that bean bag stays on. All right, let's say we're at three. This is our third one now. And we're trying to go slow and controlled. The slower you go, the more of a challenge it is for your balance. There's four. Five. Six, seven, eight, 
seven, eight. I can hear a nice little cardinal singing back here. I don't know if you can hear it. Nine. And there's ten. Good job. Excellent. Walk it out a little bit. Now we're going to go with our left foot ahead, right foot behind. Front foot's pointed straight ahead, back foot's on a 45. I'm going to go turn sideways. You don't have to turn sideways. I'm just turning sideways so you get a different view of it. You can put, stay pointed straight ahead so it's easier for you to watch me in the camera. All right. So again, when we do our weight shift, when my weight's in the back, that knee's bent. When my weight's in the front, that the front knee bends. My hips are going the same direction as the foot that I'm over, right? And my arms are in the back when my weight's in the back. Arms are in the front when my weight's in the front. Slow, controlled, flowing. Body's upright, chin's up, there's four, five, six, seven, nine and ten wow we're challenging that one more and more terrific work walk it out a little bit keep your shoulders a little roll all right we're going to do a new balance one today and it's something called the flamingo but it looks kind of storkish to me as well blue heron any of those large birds that stand in water like to do this move. So we're gonna do it too. Okay, so let's start by standing to the right side of our chair. We're gonna be putting our weight on that left leg to begin, all right? And we're gonna be working the right leg. So I'd like you to stand with your right toes on the, mat, on the floor, right beside your left foot, which is flat down, stable on the mat. Okay, you can hold on to your chair to get the hang of this, but once you feel like you're getting it a little bit, I challenge you to try to reduce the grip. So if you're holding on with a full hand or two hands, go to one hand. If you're holding on with one hand, kind of try to just have your fingers on top and see if you can maintain your balance that way. I'm gonna put my hands on my hips. Okay, I'm gonna really challenge myself. I need a challenge at this point through this quarantine. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're going to have that right toes down on the mat, you're gonna drag your heel up to your knee, and then you're gonna let your foot go back down, and just toe tap in between. Don't go all the way down, and then all the way up, and then all the way down. I want you to try to just go down to your toe. And if you're feeling really bold, don't even put your toe, just tease the floor with your toe. Just down to touch and then right back up. So you're getting more of a challenge to your balance. We're gonna try and do this 10 times. This is our first time. So we'll just start with 10 times on each leg, okay? All right, here we go. Drag your heel up to your knee and back down to the floor, right back up and down again, there's two. I'm not even touching my toe to the floor. I'm just kind of just hovering, just above. There's three, four, stay in the zone, everybody. Five, concentrate, six, seven, very good, eight, nine and ten awesome now you can really feel that in that leg standing the weight 
the leg that took all the weight, as we know, that one gets tired because you're stabilizing. But the other one too, through that thigh, that control, bringing it up nice and slow and down again. Terrific work. Walk those legs out, give those arms a little swing. We're gonna go over to the other side of our chair now. Of course, you can always stand behind your chair as well. As long as you are back far enough that you can bring your knee up in front if you need the two hands. But again, try to go fingertips or one hand. See if you can challenge yourself a little bit. But of course, do not challenge to your max. We don't want to fall, but work it a little bit if you can. Now I'm standing on my right foot and I'm going to do that same position with my left foot. So my left toe is now down on the ground. My right foot is flat and very stable. My hands are going to be on my hips. Here we go for 10. Drag your heel up to your knee and right back down. Up again, heel to my knee. My toe is still pointed straight down when I'm doing this. I'm not bringing my foot up so my toe is up in the front. My toe is pointed straight down. There's three. Very good. You have to concentrate. Four. Five. Stand up tall. Six. Beanbag's still on. I forgot about it. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. Very nice work. Walk your legs out. Being big on for this activity is very important because if you're humped over, it's going to be a lot harder to maintain your balance when you're doing this. So the beanbag again forces those shoulders back, forces your chin to be upright so that you're in a better position to be balanced over top of the one leg that you're standing on. So excellent work, very good. All right, walk it out. We're gonna lose the beanbag now. And we're gonna move on to strengthening. So we're going to grab our TheraBand, okay? So let us, we're going to do the standing TheraBand today. We'll try another type another day. We're going to do that same move that we did last week, which was standing to the side. It's the leg lift where your foot is just clearing the floor. Hold for three and close. But this time we're gonna have the band on, so there's gonna be some resistance. So it's gonna be just taking it up a notch, working those muscles a little bit more. All right, so you can sit down on your chair to get the mat around your ankles. It will be around your ankles, okay? When we stand up, I want you to take small steps so that you don't fall with the, with the band wrapped around your ankles, okay? So just tiny steps. All right, I'm standing to the right of my chair. I always go to the right first. You can tell I'm right-handed. All right, so we are going to be standing beside our chair. We are now holding this chair for sure because I want you to use it for um, kind of like that counter so it keeps you straight you don't if you bend that elbow's gonna bend too so just when I stand up tall and I put my hand on my on my backrest of my chair my arm is straight so I know if I feel my elbow bending I must be going tipping to the side and we don't want to tip we want to stay nice and straight okay so again we're lifting that foot just to clear the floor our toes are both pointed straight ahead very very important Toes not pointed out because now I'm using this muscle, my, my thigh muscle, okay? And also, as we lift our leg to the side, it's coming directly out the side. Because again, if it's in front, I'm using my thigh. If it's in back, I'm using my buttocks. Both are big muscles. We're isolating these small hip adductor muscles right now, okay? Let's do 10. So we're going to do 10 lifts. Hold for three each time. I'll count for us. Here we go. One, two, one, release. One, two, two, release. Nice and tall. One, two, three, release. Chin level. One, two, four, release. See if you're tightening your core. One, two, five, release. I'm sure you are, but just notice it. One, two, six, release. One, two, seven, release. One, two, eight, release. One, two, nine, release. And one, two, ten, release. Terrific. Walk your legs out a little bit. 
next. Okay, over to the other side. Now we're standing on our right foot. The left one is the one that we're lifting just to clear the floor. Toes are pointed straight ahead and you're lifting that leg directly out beside you. Okay, holding on to that chair to make sure that we're staying up nice and tall. Chins are level. Tighten your core. Here we go. One, two, one, release. One, two, two, release. One, two, three, release. Can you hear the ring on my tin roof here? Four, release. One, two, five, release. Pitter patter. One, two, six, release. One, two, seven, release. One, two, eight, release. One, two, nine, release. One, two, ten, release. Very nice. Awesome. Walk it out a little. You can sit down in your chair to take off your band. And we can put our band to the side now. We're going to move on to our sit-stand squats, which we've also done the past few weeks. We're going to continue with our 10, a hold, down low for five, and then 10 more, okay? Let's get into position. Oh, if you'd like to get a drink, grab one. Anytime you need a drink, you can grab a drink. All right. Okay, so your feet are placed about a little bit better, a little bit more than hip width, or shoulder width apart, I should say. Toes are angled out. Arms are going to be in the center, so we're working those shoulders and, and arm muscles. Remember, when we go down, we're not going down really deep. We're going down enough to engage these thigh muscles. You want to have your bum jut out a little bit behind you because you want to be able to see your toes in front of your knees. Just the tips of your shoes is great, okay? Because we don't want to do any damage to our knees. If this does hurt your knees, go accordingly. Dial it back, don't go down as far. Jut that bum out even farther so you're taking some of the, um, some of the pressure of this exercise through the hips more than the knee joints, okay? All right. Here we go for 10. Let's go. Down and up we come, slow and controlled. Breathe out and in and out and in. There's three, four, five. Seven, eight, nine, and we're going down for our hold. So down we go to stay for five, four, three, two, one, and up we come. Right back down, and we'll go backwards now. Ten, and nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Knocked it out of the park. Good work, everybody. Give those arms a shake. Walk your legs out a little bit. Good work. Okay, onto our hand to knee. So, if you recall, you're doing basically a standing march to begin. So everybody can just lift their legs up like so. Okay, if you arms out to the side, it makes it easier to kind of get this one coordinated. Opposite hand to opposite thigh is level one. A little bit more challenging is the hand to knee. So you're raising your knees a little bit higher and your hand is going to your knee. You may continue with either one of these for the remainder of this exercise. 
okay? Go your own pace. You don't have to go this fast. You can be going slower. Do what you need to do. Level three is the squat. Then up to touch opposite hand to opposite knee. Squat, opposite hand to opposite knee. Very good, that's it. We're already at two. And three. Four. Keep breathing. Half done. Keep going, marchers. Everybody keep going. There's six. We're on the home stretch now. Eight. Nine. And ten. Bravo. Very nice. Walk those legs out. Give those arms a swing. Terrific job. All right, we're done with the legs now. Let's get a drink again. I'm thirsty. Alrighty. Let's move on to our arms now. Find that spot on the wall where you've got nothing on the floor and you can access no pictures so you can get your, your back and your face against that wall. All right, we're gonna do our wall push-ups. So let's all stand with our feet about an arm's length away from the wall. Feet are about hip width apart. Palms are shoulder height, shoulder width. We're going to tighten our core and tighten our body so that we do a push up against the wall. Bending our shoulders, elbows and wrists and our ankles to bring our face close to the wall. Heels are glued to the floor. If your heels are coming up, you are, your feet are placed too far away from the wall. So let's do 10 of these, okay? You can count to yourself. Here we go. I'm at 10. Good job. Finish up if you haven't finished yours yet. Give your arms a little shake. All right, we're going to move on to 10 more. This is the time when you can change it up and do whatever you want. Arms can be um, wider or closer together. Uh, fingers can point inward. Fingers can point outward. Feet can be close together. One foot can be in front of the other. Or you can try closing your eyes, okay? It's up to you, whatever you'd like to do, but let's do another 10. Okay, you can get into position, here we go. I like to do five of one and five of another. shoulders a little roll and when you're ready you can turn around and put your back against the wall now remember your heels are away from the wall about six or eight inches so our legs are angled back as we put the, our whole body against the wall so your bums against the wall shoulder blades shoulders against the wall back of your head if you can chin down remember the space between your chin and your chest is small arms and palms are against the wall as well what you're focusing on though is that upper back and shoulder area. I want you to imagine you're gonna push this wall over with that part of your back. So everything else is there just for stability, but that's the part you're gonna be focusing on as you push. You'll feel pressure through your upper back and shoulders and the bottom of your feet, okay? So we're gonna push for 10. Ready? One, two, three, push. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and relax. Very good. Give your shoulders a roll. Okay, one more set of ten, back into position, shoulder blades, shoulders against the wall, heads, bums, arms, and hands are there for stability. 
You're going to do another 10. Here we go. One, two, three, push. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent. Very nice. Come off the wall. Give your shoulders a roll back. Give your shoulders a roll forward. Scissor front, scissor back. Very good. Excellent arm work. Okay, on to our stretching and flexibility part. Flexibility is so important, and that comes through stretching because we want to be able to move smoothly and have fluidity in our muscles, and this helps with that. So let's move on to stretching our thighs out, which we've worked today. You know if you're a stander, you might like to stand and do the stretch like so. So that's when your knee is doubled over on itself, heels to your bum. Knees are together, okay? When you're doing this one, your knees are together. Or you can sit on the side of your chair. One bump cheek and knee hangs off. Hold on to the other side. Or the exact same thing is sitting to the front of your chair. One bum cheek hangs over, one knee's off. Holding onto the back of my chair for stability. My knee is pointed straight down. My toe is in the floor behind me and my heel is pushed back. So that just gives a little bit of tension through this muscle. You may be up into your hip flexor as well. You're facing the direction that your body is turned. Heads are upright, shoulders are back. And again, we're gonna hold for about 20. And switch to the other side now. All right, so remember, knee is pointed down if you're a sitter. He, toe is in the floor, heel pushed back. Body's upright, chin's level. If you need to lean back, if you don't feel it from just sitting, and you, you can lean back a little bit, you'll get a little bit more stretch through that uh, front of your thigh into your hip flexor. Very good. Love that. Great. Okay, we're going to move on to our calf stretch now. So we're going to stand up. Everybody rise. So you can put your chair ahead of you and stand behind your chair. I'm going to put it to the side so you can see what I'm doing. My right foot's going to go ahead and my left foot's behind. I'm going to bend my front knee, but my back leg is staying straight and my heel is glued down to the floor. And I'm put leaning putting pressure in through that front knee, so I can feel that stretch back here. Bodies are upright, chins are level, okay? Once you get that down pat, if you'd like, you can try putting your hands on your hips. Do a balance. And if you're feeling very bold, you can try closing your eyes. That adds a whole other element of balance work, so be very careful. If you're feeling like you're off kilter, open those eyes up right away and you've got the chair here to grab in case, okay? Nice job. And we're gonna move over to the other side. So now my left foot's ahead and my right foot's behind. Remember the front knee is bent, back leg is straight. I'm going to lean into this front knee, put my hips into this front knee, back leg remains straight, heel is glued to the floor. I'm going to feel this in my back calf, okay? My hips are square, I'm facing the direction that I'm standing, facing the direction I'm standing. Bodies are upright, chins are level. You put your hands on your hips if you feel like you want to try a balance as well. And if you want to try the eyes closed, just be careful and uh, open your eyes if you need to, okay? Very good. All right. We're going to sit back down on the front edge, edge of our chair. So we're not using that backrest yet. We're sitting on the front edge using our bodies to hold ourselves up nice and tall. Right foot is coming out in front of you. Heel is in the floor, toe is up, 
pull it back towards you. Your knee is unlocked, it's relaxed, okay? So we're not forcing it down, we're just, our knee is straight, but we're not forcing it into extension, it's relaxed. Heels down, toes upright, pull it back towards you. You're gonna feel this stretch in your calf, perhaps behind your knee, maybe even into your hamstring behind your thigh. Sit up nice and tall or lean forward and put your weight on your bent knee. Remember to try to relax into all of these stretches. Take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Very good, let's switch to the other leg. Left foot's out in front of you now. Heels in the floor, toe is up, pull it back towards you. Up nice and tall, or lean forward and put your weight on your bent knee. Very good, remember to relax. Very good job, excellent. All right, now we can sit right back in our seats, right against that backrest. We're gonna do a relaxing deep breathing now. Feet are flat on the floor, one hand on your chest, one hand on your belly. We're going to do those deep breaths and try and get them right down to below our ribs and our diaphragm here if we can by the end of our seven breaths. All right, let's close our eyes and relax. Breathe in through your nose. And out through your mouth. Breathe in through your nose. And out through your mouth. Breathe in. And exhale, letting your shoulders relax. Breathe in. And exhale, letting your face relax. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and stretch. Very good. Give yourselves a big hug. Good work today, everybody. So proud of you sticking with this. Very good. Try to do these videos another one or two times this week if you can. That'll help keep that muscle and any momentum you're gaining, any balance you're gaining, keep it going, moving forward. Also, get out and get a walk in when you can, every day if you can, every other day. I know sometimes the weather isn't conducive, but as the warm weather comes and the nicer weather comes, hopefully you can get out. Remember to social distance. So if someone's coming on the sidewalk, give them a wide berth. You can stop and chat, but keep that two meters in between you. Okay, tell your friends if you can about these videos too. I'm sure they like to keep active during this time and have a little bit of fun. Um, tune in next week for our next weekly video uh, of our Keeping Balance Fun Fit From Home brought to you by Centre de Santé Communitaire, Hamilton, Niagara. Someone wants to say goodbye too. Oh, this is Oreo and she says bye bye until next time. Have a great week everybody. Oh and don't forget, look for your marbles or something similar. Be creative for next week, okay? Take care, bye.